Okay, so just look at this table, all right? So what we have in this table, real GDP, okay? So the YD is disposable income, okay? And these two equal to each other. So essentially that's just one way to look at uh, real GDP. Now we have consumption. So by the way, so if you look at consumption, this column, versus disposable income, this column. What we notice is, say so they follow this relationship, right? So look at here, if your disposable income is zero, so your consumption is 300. Now your disposable income increase, so for example here, by 500. And then your consumption increase by 300. Hence, so you have an piece of uh, 0 0.6, right? Because 600 minus 300 divided by 500 minus 0. So that will give you 0 0.6. Now, uh, <clears throat> now, I planned it. So we said, we assume this is constant. Doesn't change with this of income. Now, the last column essentially just take a summation between C and I planned. Now say, for example, 300 plus 500 equal to 800. 2,400 plus 500 equal to 2,900. All right. Now, based on this table, okay, so there's a one particular row, which is here. Your real GDP equal to aggregate planned expenditure. Or other way to see is, so your disposable income is it can exactly afford your planned expenditure, All right? So now let's see what happened if we are not, not in this role. Let's say for example, if we are here, okay, and here, so the real GDP is 1,500, the same for your disposable income, right? But now your planned expenditure, okay? So your planned expenditure is 1,700, okay? And that means, that means you overshoot, right? And then they are gonna have an adjustment. Now I'm going to uh, show you this adjustment in the uh, next slide, okay? And the similar is, so if we are here, okay, your income is different from your planned expenditure, right? So we are gonna see, so how the adjustment is gonna happen. But at first, we just look at a few more slides. So we start with consumption function, right? So consumption function equal to A plus MPC plus YD, right? And then, so we add, what we're we gonna do? We add this investment, because investment is fixed at 500. So we just simply shift the entire curve off. Now, this purple line, will give us the planned aggregate expenditure, right? So this planned aggregate expenditure says, so if the real GDP is 1500, and then, so we can look at this line to find out what would be the expenditure, all right? Well, other words, so if we expect the real GDP equal to 3,500, and similarly, so you can look at this, uh, this purple line to find out what would be the aggregate expenditure. All right. So now, as I said earlier, there is only one line 
such that real GDP equal to aggregate expenditure, right? So the question is, if we are here, okay, let's look at it here. So the real GDP is below the aggregate expenditure. What would happen? Okay, first, let's just see why we end up with here. We end up with here is because we start everyone, when everyone do your consumption and investment decision. So you have a plan. Your plan is based on your disposable income. Your disposable income equal to real GDP. So in some sense, so your consumption and investment plan is based on your expectation regarding to the state of the economy, which is real GDP. Now we end up with this role in some sense, we were quite pessimistic. We were thinking, oh, the real GDP this year is gonna be fairly low, 1,000. And then that's according to, so we are gonna have a consumption plan of 900 and an investment plan of 500. And then if we, follow this plan and follow our hunch, our hunch regarding to real GDP. And then in terms of the aggregate expenditure is gonna be 1400, but we only produce 1000, but the demand is 1400, right? And then just think about the story of inventory. That means, so you're gonna run low on your inventory because the demand exceed what you produce. And then, then what the business is gonna do, so they are going to increase the order, right? Because, so they can satisfy the demand, right? And then, so they're going to increase the order. So that's going to lead the economy go to this direction, because real GDP is gonna go up, right? Now let's say for example, so if the adjustment was too drastic, we go to here, okay? Or in other words, if we start with very, very optimistic prediction of our economy. So we're thinking, so the real GDP will be 3000, income will be 3000. And then now crowding the everyone plan their consumption. This is the investment. Now, unfortunately, so with this 3,000 in mind, the demand is gonna be only 2,600. So that just means, so you can't, you can't sell your stock, okay? Like in the case of Apple, so they just can't get rid of their iPhone 12 mini. And then what they can do, so they must cut their order. So they'll go to this direction. Like only when we are here, we correctly focus what's going on. We produce 2,000. Households has an income, households and business has an income of 2,000. And then, so this income, these two, uh, 1,500 of consumption, 500 investment, or aggregate expenditure of 2,000, that exactly equal to what we produce. We are in an equilibrium, right? Now here, these slides is kind of summarize what I, what I just discussed, okay? So planned aggregate expend, expenditure can be different from real GDP, right? And so, but they are different, only there is unplanned inventory investment. Let's go back to the previous one. Like say, them here. So they are different. That just means, so your inventory will run low, right? Because you, you can't satisfy the demand. So actually in this case, your unplanned inventory investment is negative because you start to run in low. On the other hand here, your unplanned inventory investment is positive. You start to pile off. 
Again, like the case in Apple, right? Okay. So there are two cases. If firm or our economy have overestimated sale and produce too much, there will be unintended addition to inventory. Hence, this will be positive. On the other hand, so if we underestimate, and then this will be negative. Okay, so in this case, your real GDP is less than like a planned aggregate expenditure. You can satisfy the need. And here, real GDP exceed planned aggregate expenditure. Okay, you cannot get rid of your stock, right? Okay, now let's just look at practice question to consolidate what we just discussed. Suppose the level of planned aggregate expenditure is 500. Real GDP is 600, according to our model. So the answer is A, right? Unplanned increase in inventory, because you can't get rid of the stock. Okay. Now we take stock of what we have discussed. GDP equals C plus I. So this is coming from expenditure approach. And then this is equal to C plus I planned plus I unplanned. That just coming from the definition of I. And the next step, so basically we just group this first two term, right? And hence, hence, whenever GDP is exceeding planned aggregate expenditure, and then unplanned inventory investment is positive. Like think about the example I just gave to you, Apple, right? So the Apple can sell the planned iPhone 12 mini. So then the inventory start to pile up, right? And then, then the business will do something. What, they, what they're gonna do? So they're gonna call the order. So this literally happens in reality, right? Now, on the other hand, if real GDP less than aggregate planned expenditure, meaning so they can't satisfy their demand. Maybe you can think about what happened last year regarding to the pandemic, the like face mask. And then so later, toward the end of the year, or, or which is still happening right now, is the uh, GPU, graphic card, right? So I don't know any, any of, uh, of you are looking for a graphic card. Actually, I am looking for a graphic card. It seems, it seems like we can get, right? And then certainty, so now the production is below the <coughs> expenditure. And then, then, so we are running low in inventory. So pretty much you go to any website, you find out it's out of stock. And then, so that's gonna send a signal to the um, business. What they're gonna do, they're gonna increase the order, right? Or to summarize in this parenthesis says, in this bracket, so firms will act to correct their mistake by producing more or less accordingly. In the first case, Apple decide to call the order of iPhone 12 mini. In the second case, AMD or NVIDIA, so they decide to expand their production. I have a quick question. Yes. Sorry, um, so when, you, when it says whenever real GDP is less than uh, aggregate expenditure, could you, is that the same thing as saying I planned will increase? Because wouldn't your planned investment, if if you like underestimate it, won't your planned investment spending increase? Um, good question. So here, the plan for now, we just simplify, this is fixed. 
just think about this. This is your okay. investment decision you made earlier. So you have your factory built up. No, so this is a fix. Okay. And so now, so we are going to focus on here. All right. Good question. Thank you. Okay. So now we go to next slides. Okay. So now we are ready to summarize what we learn. So this is essentially we have uh, done a lot of preparation. Now we are in the equilibrium. Okay, so this income expenditure equilibrium. Okay, in some sense, it's very similar to the equilibrium uh, we learned in microeconomics, like supply and demand. Okay, and then in this equilibrium, so aggregate output, which is real GDP, equal to planned aggregate expenditure. Okay, and you can think about this as supply, this demand, right? Okay, and then, so we also have a definition of income expenditure equilibrium GDP, which is a level of real GDP at which real GDP equals planned aggregate expenditure. Like in the previous example, there are partic there's a particular rule. So they equal to each other. Now we can look at this diagram to reinforce what we just learned, okay? Or just replay what we just discussed, okay? So where we start? We start with aggregate expenditure. So remember this equals C plus I. And also remember this equal to A plus MPC times YD plus I. I, by the way, so I this I planned it. Oh, by the way, it's here. Okay, so this is where we start. Now we are going to have a forty-five degree line. So along this forty-five degree line, so everything on horizontal line equal to everything on vertical line. Or in other words, so on this forty-five degree line, we have aggregate plan expenditure equal to GDP. Okay, so this 45 degree line, it just shows you, shows you the region or where, so these two meet each other. This is mathematically. Now this 45 degree line must cross with this purple line. So this purple line is economics, right? Because we just learned the relationship between aggregate expenditure and your GDP. Okay, and then, so these two lines cross each other. So we have this income expenditure equilibrium. Okay, and so the level of GDP we find at the cross is the income expenditure equilibrium GDP. Okay. Now, use this diagram so we can understand why we are here. It means here, why we are here. Okay. So if we start with 2,500, okay, we overestimate. And then, then, so by looking at this purple line, you can see the actual expenditure or the planned expenditure will be below what you produce. And then, so you're going to have an increase in inventory investment. Literally, it just means you can't sell your stuff. Okay. So your goods and the service start to pile up in your inventory. Right. And then, so the business will correct their mistake by reducing the order, like Apple just did, right? On the other hand, so if we are here, and then, so by looking at this purple line, the expenditure exceed you produced. So that means you're running low of your inventory very, very quickly. Now just think about 
the market for GPU, right? So one reason why the demand for GPU is so high is because so people get bored, they, 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 they want to play video game. The other reason is certainly has something to do with Bitcoin, right? Because of in investment, right? Because people you would need the GPU to do mining, right? So anyway, so just think about the GPU market. So there is a high demand compared to what you produce. Your inventory is low, you go to any store, okay? it says just out of stock. We are back in order. We have new order coming in. So that just means, so they start to produce more. So you can see either we are on the right hand side, you're going to go to left hand side. If you're on the left hand side, you're going to push to the right hand side until we reach here. And then we are in equilibrium. Okay. And this point, this, this cross, and we have a name. This is called Kensington Cross. Right? And also, this Kensington Cross is also used to denote this diagram. This is a diagram that identifies income expenditure equilibrium as a point where planned aggregate expenditure cross 45 degree line. Okay, so this 45 degree line is just a mathematical representation. So these two must equal to each other. So this purple line is the economics we study to show you how expenditure will vary with real GDP, right? And finally needs to cross each other. So that's our lower economics again, okay? right? And I also explained to you, so what happens if we are below this point or we are above this point or in general, what would happen if we are not at this point? What would happen in the economy, right? Okay. So now we can look at this practice question to understand what's going on. Okay. So this is a fictional economy, Outlandia. The economy is current at point B. Go one by one. Is this an income expenditure equilibrium? Certainly no. Right? So they produce a Y1, but the demand is above Y1. How we know that? Because this, this expenditure is above 45 degree line. So this is A. B, what level will this economy produce at equilibrium? And C, right? See, at what level of GDP is unplanned inventory investment is positive. Okay. Any point to the right hand side here, you have a positive inventory investment because you produce more than you plan to spend. Right? And similarly, so the last one, so any point on the left hand side, you have a negative inventory investment or unplanned inventory investment, or the planned aggregate expenditure is greater than income. Okay. So those are the answers to previous slides questions. Okay. So you can just read them a little bit more carefully. Now, so you may be wondering what can cause the AE curve to shift. And why we care about that is because, let's just go back to the previous slides. If, if this curve shift, and then that's going to lead to a different equilibrium, right? So for example, so this curve shift up. And then the equilibrium will go to here. On the other hand, if the curve shift down, we'll go to here. And then, so we are interested in 
to see what factor can cause this curve shift. Okay, there are two possible source of a shift. First, change in interest rate. Second, change in wealth. So interest rate is going to affect your investment decision. Okay. And the change in wealth usually is going to change your consumption. Right? Uh, like last year, the interest rate declined. And you probably heard from the news. So the housing market becomes very hot. Right? There are many people took advantage of the low mortgage rate. So that just investment. So change your wealth. So just imagine, so if we are expecting a recession, then you may not want to spend, right? So you want to save for a rainy day, okay? So that's how things can change. Right. Now, I'm gonna show you a, a multiplier. So this multiplier is similar to the multiplier we discussed earlier. Oh, by the way, so here just, uh, circle back to the earlier point we just made. Change in inventory considered as a leading indicator for economic activity. Why is that? It's because whenever AE planned not equal to real GDP or output, and then so that's going to show up in inventory, change in inventory, and then that's going to send a signal to the business. Okay, think about the case of iPhone 12 mini, or think about the case of a GPU. Okay, and then that's why economists pay close attention to change in inventory and to focus the direction of our future economy. And the people uh, do investment, so they also study that carefully to focus or to predict the direction of stock market. Right. Now, we're going to use this example to understand multiplier. Yeah. So start with these two column. Okay, so this real GDP, this aggregate expansion plan. From the discussion we have so far, we knew this is gonna be the equilibrium. Whenever we above this line, so you're gonna have a negative inventory investment. So you're gonna increase the order. Below this line, so you have a positive unplanned inventory investment. Okay, you wanna call your order until you reach here. Now, Let's see what happened if there's a change in autonomous spending. Okay. What is that? It just says, okay, C equal to A <clears throat> plus MPC YD. Now A increase. <clears throat> okay. So now you can see we are going to enter a new equilibrium. But I'll just pay attention to the difference. So here, the GDP increase from 2,000 to 3,000. That is 1,000 increase. But looking at this row, so you know the autonomous change is only 400, right? Because 12 minus eight is four. So you can see there is a small increase in autonomous spending but leads to a large increase <clears throat> in equilibrium GDP. Okay. What is behind this difference? The answer is the multiplier, the usual multiplier we start. Right. So to understand that, let's just use this graph. So this is before, right before the autonomous change. So I just already show you 2000 is going to be equilibrium. Now, 
So we have new aggregate expenditure function. So this curve move up by 400. Okay. Now you can see this is gonna cross the 45 degree line at a higher level. Right. And then if we look at the horizontal difference versus the vertical difference, it's different. And then the difference largely because of the slope. Right? Large very slow. And mathematically, so we have this relationship. Or the key thing is this is a multiplier. How does it work? So there's an increase in 400. But this 400 is going to lead to further increase, MPC times 400. And then MPC times 400 times MPC, so on and so forth. Okay, so there's a multiplier. Okay. Now we can revisit the paradox of thrifty. Okay, so this is the things we start at the beginning of this chapter. Sorry, at the beginning of the uh, of the section, we start to look at macroeconomics. Right? What is paradox of thrifty? Recession is, it is optimal, rational for individual to cause spending, save more, because you want to save for your future uncertain income day, right? But this uh, individual saving or individual thrifty will turn out to be a bad thing to the economy. Why? It's because everyone caught the spending. So that's going to squeeze the demand. That's going to dampen our recession. That's going to make things worse. Okay. So to summarize here, if every, everyone else does the same, the economy is depressed, job are lost, and everyone is worse off because of their virtuous individual action. Or in other words, at individual level, it is optimal. But everybody everyone do the same things, we add them together, so that becomes a disaster, right? Okay, and then, then here, in this slide, they just summarize the changing inventory is a leading indicator, okay? Notice there's an increase in consumer spending in Q4 of 2001 is here. But that's why, so you have inventory decline because you cannot satisfy this demand. But now if we look at it here, so the business adjusts by increased order or increase unplanned inventory, <coughs> sorry, increase their um, production. So you can see this decline and real GDP increase. Okay. okay, so there are one more slide. So we, did, we finished this uh, chapter, right? So this is what happens in 2009 in the Great Depression, right? In the Great Depression, so the government decide, or there was a discussion, should the government rescue GM or not? So GM stands for General Motor, right? And uh, the argument for that decision was, so GM is too big to fail. In a sense, if we let GM fail, so that's going to lead a more job loss. And then, so people argue, so we should rescue GM. Now, there's a question in, from the perspective of economics, were GM problems self-made or was it a victim of poor economy? How we understand that? So actually this picture shows, right? So the auto sale decline. It, 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 the worst of date, it declined by more than 50%, right? Because here is like 16 million 
Now it's around 10 million. Okay. And then why there was a decline is because there was a recession and the people, everyone was worried about the future and then they cut the spending or postpone the purchase of big ticket items. So in that sense, the so GN problem, not entirely self-made. Yes, they may have their management problem. They may have their problem in terms of lack of innovation. Okay, but at the same time, there's a significant decline in demand. Okay, this is out of, out of their control. So their problem, part of the problem is coming from a poor economy. So that is partially justified why we may want to help GM. On the other hand, so the GM, so the employee, a huge amount of uh, workers. So if GM fail, and that's going to lead to large scale of layoff. Okay? So that's why the government decided to rescue GM. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna stop here for today. And again, so just remind you, so we are gonna have a CBA events tomorrow. And we have another one uh, in next week, even though so this is a spring break, so we still have the regular CBA events going on, okay? So I encourage you to participate and just make notes and that is gonna help you to um, take some credit, right? Okay, uh, thank you so much for your attention. And uh, so enjoy your spring break. After the spring break, we will continue our discussion on this section, All right? Thank you.